We're now looking at the interior of the ball and socket joint. The glenoid socket is here, the humeral head is here. Coming up, we see the biceps tendon right there. That looks good. Looking on up, we see the disruption in the rotator cuff right up in here. You can see where it's been torn away from the tuberosity. You can see the intact cuff tendon, so that's it's a significant tear, but it's not enormous. This is the subscapularis tendon right here. We come forward, we look down in the subscapularis recess. I don't see any evidence of loose bodies. This is the middle glenohumeral ligament right here. The superior glenohumeral ligament's right there. We slide down anteriorly, we see the anterior band of the inferior glenohumeral ligament and come on down into the lower portion of the joint. These, this arcade is the uh, inferior capsule attaching the humerus. As we withdraw, we see the attachment sites of the teres minor and the, and the infraspinatus. This is the normal bare area on the humerus. That's not uh, abnormal. And now we're up looking at the top and the tearing of the supraspinatus from below. Looking down at the attachment site, this is where a slap tear would occur, and there's nothing wrong with that attachment site of the biceps to the labrum. <clears throat> the anterior labrum looks good here, no separation. Posterior labrum looks good. A little bit of a flap there, or an articular cartilage loose body. Coming down inferiorly, the six o'clock position on the glenoid looks good. The posterior recess looks nice. Again, some beefy red synovitis in this area, indicative of the inflammation. I'm gonna come in with my shaver. And we'll get that little articular cartilage piece out of the way. Coming on back of the uh, biceps. We'll want to pull the biceps down into the joint to make sure there's no disruption. And you can see the pulley system on the biceps up there and that looks normal. This is a look into the bursal area above the rotator cuff tendon. So we're now up into the bursa and immediately we see the tear of the rotator cuff right here. Would you hook up the secondary inflow please? See a good deal of synovitis up in this area. We're gonna clear that out. We're over in the subdeltoid area here. Clearing the synovitis. Moving over to the front. You see the biceps tendon right here. Clear the inflammation from off the undersurface of the acromion. So we'll strip the soft tissue off the acromion here to expose the bone. This is rather thick. We want to identify the anterior lateral edge. We'll keep on taking the soft tissue off here. And that's the anterior lateral edge right down here. Move over here a little bit more centrally. And you can see how this raised area of torn rotator cuff tendon would be impinging and causing problems. May I have the burr, please? Yeah. 
And I'll bring in the burr. And we'll flatten this down a little bit. And then come over here a little bit more centrally. All right, so we've done our chromioplasty. Want to make sure nothing's over here impinging on the tendon. Shaver, please. May I have the smooth grasper, please? Yes. Come in with our grasper. We'll grab the tendon. And see how mobile this is. Yeah, the bigger one. So we don't want to pull this down <clears throat> super hard. Okay. So we're now clearing off the greater tuberosity and roughening this up for our reattachment site. We now have our clear cannula, uh, can clear cannulas in place. These two working cannulas will help us accomplish this repair. And the next step is to uh, add our suture anchors to the mix. So we're putting in our punch right here at the articular cartilage margin adjacent to the, the biceps. Gonna go down to the laser line, thank you. That's created our hole for the biocomposite biodegradable suture anchor. And you see the anchor coming in here. We'll advance that <clears throat> down to the laser line. We're gonna disassemble the insertion tool. And then we'll tug on our three sutures to make sure they're secure. Smooth grasper, please. Come in here and get an idea. There we go. Okay, the small smooth grasper is right here. Green grasper, please. <clears throat> so we're going to start transferring the sutures. And I'm going to start off with the zebra stripe here. We'll pull one arm so we know which one to use. Expresso, please. So we've come in with our expresso here. And we'll reach in and grab the suture. And then remove our espresso. And that'll help us bring 
the um, the tendon over. See how how that's pulling it over. That'll be good there. Make it easier for us to pass the next ones. Now I'm going to come in. I'm going to get a blue suture here, and we'll deliver the working end out our clear cannula. I'll get another bite of this tendon going through both layers of this delaminated structure. Pull that out. And then we'll get our third suture, which is the lavender one. and come over and take another bite of this tendon. Pull that back like that. So now we've got all three of our sutures passed through the, the tendon here. I think it will need a little bit more to get that tacked down. So we put, passed what's called a margin convergence stitch, single lumen knot pusher and hemostat. We're going to tie this, which will bring these two edges of the tendon together. We're going to tie a knot outside the body and then advance it down into the surface of the tendon. This is a sliding locking knot, which is called a Tennessee slider. It's basically a half hitch, a clove hitch rather. And then we'll lock that clove hitch and then reinforce it with some half hitches reversing the direction of the post, or rather the throw, like you would with a square knot. Well, we can't really get true square knots when we tie them arthroscopically. We can reverse the post and reverse the throw to get that secure cord cutter please and now we have a little device that helps us cut these sutures to a standard length and that's brought that down a lot pleased how that looks smooth grasper the large one please thanks Uh, see what happens if I pull that over like that. I think maybe one more might be beneficial. So now we've got two margin convergence stitches right here, which have brought this delaminated flap back up where we want to see it. That looks 
much better. So we've passed a shuttling suture through the repair and now we're inserting our platelet which plasma fiber membrane into position. You see right there it's being held with some viral sutures and will be held in position as we tie our knots. So I'm going to come in and get the lavender suture that we've passed through the tendon and the lavender suture that is still in the anchor. And we'll pull that out. And then we're gonna tie this down using um, a sliding locking knot. So here it goes the knot in place. What that does is brings our tendon up on top of the bone. It also traps the platelet-rich platelet -rich plasma fiber membrane into position. And as we go across the suture line, tying these sequentially, that will secure everything in place. And we'll go ahead and cut the, the lavender and stitch. Now we'll come in and we'll get the blue one. Pull that out. And then retrieve the blue one from here. and tie it as well. So we've now got the tendon reattached, the uh, margin convergence stitches in place there, the platelet-rich plasma fiber membrane in the interval between the tendon and the bone. And the next step is to do place some marrow vents. We're going to come in with our microfracture all. And we're going to perforate the greater tuberosity. Tap that, which please. Thank you. Right here. And right here. So we can see these marrow vents that we've created here. You can begin to see some of the marrow elements beginning to ooze up into the joint. So now we're going to internally rotate to look at that intact tendon and externally rotate. We're going to come in through the transdeltoid portal and look down on top of the repaired rotator cuff tendon. That's been reattached nicely. We can see the decompression there on top. And this concludes the arthroscopic surgical procedure.